Today I want to talk to you about God and gods. Deuteronomy 10.17, written by Moses, says, For the Lord your God, He is God of gods. That means there's one high God and many lesser gods. In Psalm 136, too, David says, Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. Now, the high God is called Elohim. And the lower gods are also called Elohim because they are his creation. God, whose name in Hebrew is Yah, created many spirits. They are his sons and daughters, and in Hebrew they're called Elohim. Now, sometimes humans were called Elohim too. For example, the judges of Israel were called Elohim, and Moses was called an Elohim, and Thomas called Jesus Elohim one time. That doesn't mean that the Elohim are to be worshipped, only the one high Elohim, Yah, and I call him Yah Eloha because Eloha is singular for Elohim. Daniel had a vision and he saw a fiery stream coming out of a throne and he saw an image of or a vision of Yah seated upon the throne and he said, this is in Daniel 7, 9, he said, thousands, thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. So the Elohim or the gods are in the numbers of 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. They're spirits. That means they have no gender and they have no sex. Some of them rebelled and are on this earth and they live here as demons. Some from the divine court have come to the earth as messengers. And today I want to talk to you about three main messengers who came down from heaven, three Elohim. In Hebrew, a messenger is called a malakim Elohim. Malachim is translated into English as angels. The chief Malachim Elohim is translated as the angel of Yah, or the angel of the Lord. The second important angel was the one that accompanied Elijah and also accompanied John the Baptizer. And the third angel, which is called the angel of the truth, or Malachim Emeth, is vital to every Christian and, and I want to really focus on the importance of the angel of the truth. But first let's look at the angel of the Lord. The Jewish encyclopedia says that the angel of the Lord was called the Memra. In Greek that would be Logos. And it was in the beginning and was Yah's architect in creation. Now if you are familiar with Proverbs 8, it says God created everything by wisdom. So the Memra, Logos, Elohim, that was in the beginning as God's architect is the angel of wisdom. Wisdom talks about being there before the hills were formed and the lakes were formed and that his delight was in the sons of men. Let's see if I can find Proverbs 22:31. He says, I was there before he marked out the foundations of the earth. I was by him as a master workman. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his habitable earth, and my delight was with the sons of men. So this wisdom angel from the beginning was going to work with human beings upon the earth. I believe this is the wisdom angel that gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, that led the children of Israel out of the desert, that stopped the mouths of lions when Daniel was in the den, that saved the three Hebrew children when they were in the fire. And it was the same angel of wisdom that appeared to Joseph in the New Testament in his dreams and to the shepherds of Bethlehem when Yeshua was born. I further believe that this Logos Memra, wisdom angel, came down upon Yeshua at the Jordan River when he was baptized. And from that point on, Yeshua could say, 
Yah is in me. Now, Yeshua told us, and John the Baptist also told us, that no one has ever seen God or heard his voice except Jesus. So when we say Yah is in him, we're talking about the angel of wisdom, which is God's angel of presence, God's manifestation, because God has never appeared on the earth to anyone, and no one has ever heard his voice. So he does everything through his angels. That's how he interacts with human beings. Um, in the very beginning of John, it says in English, in the beginning was the word or the logos. And the logos was, and, uh, our translators say, translators say God, but in Hebrew, you could say the logos was an Elohim. He was God's messenger. And all things were made by this architect. And it goes on to say that that the Logos made flesh. If you look at the Greek, it's real clear. It doesn't say the Logo was made flesh, but the Logos made flesh. So the angel, the architect, created human beings, and then it says it tented among us. So the angel lived in Yeshua as his tent. Jesus said, I am the tabernacle, the tent. God, the Father, dwells in me. Well, that is... God's manifestation, his angel dwelled in Jesus, and Jesus said, by the Logos, he healed people. And he spoke the Logos wherever he went. And then when people wouldn't receive him, he said, well, you, you won't receive me because you can't receive the Logos in your hearts that I'm trying to bring to you. So, that's the first angel. The second angel is the angel that accompanied Elijah. Elijah had no power of his own, but the angel was upon him. Now this angel is nameless. John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, was told that the same spirit, or the same angel that was on Elijah would be on John. So that's the second angel. Not to be confused with the angel that was upon Yahshua, the angel of wisdom. Yahshua, just before he died, he said, I'm going back to heaven, or I'm going up to heaven, and I'm coming back to baptize you with the angel of the truth. And when he came to the locked room, he said to his apostles, Receive ye the, the Spirit, this Holy Spirit that I'm bringing to you, this Holy Messenger. In Greek it's called Honuma Tes Aletheia, the angel of the truth. So the angel of the truth is the messenger that is available for all Christians and we need to pray for him because Yeshua said, if you ask, you shall receive. He said, which of you being fallible would not give good gifts to your children? So the Heavenly Father wants to give the angel of the truth to those who ask. Now the angel of the truth only has one mission. Some people have confused the angel as being the third part of God. His mission is to focus on Yeshua and lead us to deeper understanding of Yeshua. He helps us to recall every word that Yeshua spoke. He helps us to understand the dark parables. He helps us to everything, understand everything about the return of Yeshua. He helps us to understand sin and forgiveness. He helps us to understand about the fall of Satan, who is the ruler of this world. So, to fully participate as the disciple of Yeshua, you must receive the angel of the truth. So, in conclusion, I want you to think about the three angels, but really focus on the angel of the truth. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask as if your life depended upon it. Seek as if your life depended upon it. Knock as if your life depended upon it because it does.